I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to those of us gathered here and those watching on the, the live stream as we gather to say goodbye uh, to Dave. It's so sad that we can't fill the church with Dave's friends and family. I'm sure that the place would be packed and there would be people stood outside. That's evidenced by the numbers there are stood outside there today. Clearly, he was a man who touched the lives of many people uh, and blessed their lives. So a great tribute to him right at the very outset of all of this. Clearly a time like this for you who knew Dave and loved him is one of overwhelming sadness and grief. Um, a, a real sense of loss, a sense even of confusion about why did this have to happen? Why now? Why to him? 
why in this way, where do we go from here? All sorts of questions come crowding in at a difficult time like this. And we should look, obviously acknowledge the sadness that you're feeling today. It would be silly not to. But we're here today not just because Dave died. We're here because Dave lived. We're here because he lived and he t his life touched your life and helped to shape your life. And so as we go through the service today, I hope you'll find time to remember the good times that you spent with Dave, to celebrate his life and to give thanks to God for him. You'll know that we sadly have to keep our masks on and we're not allowed to sing the hymns that have been chosen, but we can listen to them and the words are printed for you in the order of service. But we begin by bowing our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the themes that comes up time and time again in the Bible, so clearly something God felt was really important for us to know, so he put it in there so many times that we wouldn't forget it, is about his ongoing love and care for his people, not just in this life, but on into the next life too. And probably one of the best known passages that speak of that everlasting love of God is Psalm 23, reminding us as it does that God walks with us even through the valley of the shadow of death. So I'm going to read Psalm 23 for us now. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup will be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we're going to listen now to the first of the, the hymns that have been chosen for today, I Vow to Thee, My Country.
James is going to come uh, and bring us his thoughts on Dave on behalf of the whole family. Uh, these are words that I have written, um, but I'm reading on behalf of my mum, Emily and Kate, Hannah and myself. It comes as no surprise to how truly devastated we all are with the sudden loss of Dave. It certainly doesn't feel fair. Dave had such an integral role in our family that we'll all feel lost without him. I try my hardest to put into words just how much of a great person he was. I remember meeting Dave for the first time when I was 17 years old back in 2004. It was around my childhood home in Thomas Street and mum had warned me to be nice as he too had been nice to my mum and that she wanted Hannah and myself to meet him. I remember the thought process of thinking whatever, fully expecting or wanting this man to not be so great so I had a good reason to pick fault. How wrong could I have been? It takes a big person to fully embrace the role of a stepdad. You have to love and support your partner's children and blissfully ignore all the teenage tantrums and dramas. Dave was more than suitable for the role and it didn't take long for all, um, sorry, it didn't take long at all for Hannah and myself to see how happy Dave made our mum and the happiness it gave us all merging our two families. My mum gained two daughters and Emily and Kate and Hannah and myself gained two sisters. There were weekends together and holidays in Yuki to name a few and even then you could see just what family meant to Dave. As time progressed, everybody was aware of Dave's handyman abilities. This stretched from decking in the garden, wiring electrics, tiling, wallpapering, fixing ovens and washing machines, you name it, Dave fixed it. Or at the very least, he had a tool for the job and he'd give it a good go. Dave was truly a selfless individual, giving up his entire weekend to help anybody who needed it. Family, friends, friends of friends, or people that just happened to write in a Facebook group asking for help. Dave would answer that call and ask for nothing but a cup of tea in return. Dave found happiness in helping others, as simple as that. This was a true display of Dave's character. As all of us have grown up, we've also grown up to witness how proud, loving and caring Dave was on a daily basis. Dave loved family, Dave loved being with family and Dave loved talking about family. I didn't need to speak to Emily and Kate every week to know how they were or what they were both up to. Dave would proudly announce every achievement, from Emily's graduation and first position as a teacher to also Kate's graduation and her independent travels to China and the lessons that she taught there also. As Hannah married Stuart and went on to have two beautiful children, Megan and Freddie, Grandad Dave was instantly on hand. Dave was besotted with these two children. To say their feelings were similar would be an understatement. Grandad Dave could colour in, he could help brush doll's hair, and with the arrival of Freddie, he could play football, build Lego, or quite simply sit still so that Fred could practice his ninja moves on him. Dave loved his family, and his family loved him. I had a brief spell of moving back home in 2019. With my arrival came my one-year-old golden Labrador, Henry. Dave was over the moon as he'd been trying to convince my mum to have a dog for years. I moved out in 2020 but came to, soon came to the realisation that I was to be leaving Henry with my mum and Dave. Not because I wanted to, but because I think if I separated the bond between Dave and Henry, neither the Dave or dog would be happy uh, with moving forward. So Henry quickly became our dog. Walks in the morning around the estate and big walks along the canal after tea and weekends. Henry never left Dave's side. Two best mates, inseparable. He's the only dog I've known to have multiple orthopedic dog beds, aftershave and multiple colour-coded leads and harnesses, spoilt rotten. I never had a chance. I enjoyed my brief time of moving back home and time spent with Dave chatting, nothing in particular but just how are you, feeling okay, need anything. Dave didn't want to intrude but wanted to let me know he was there should I ever need anything. That was Dave. As I'm sat writing this, I'm struggling to choose one memory that reminds me of Dave. There are so many, his deep baritone voice, the sound of his laugh, or the joking around singing daft songs to the grandchildren or the dogs, always to a smile or a wagging tail. We love you dearly, Dave, and we'll miss you forever. Good night and God bless. Thank you for that, James, for a wonderful tribute to, to Dave. At the beginning of uh, the service, I read that Psalm 23, which speaks about God's ongoing love and care for his people. That must sound pretty hollow at the moment to a family that has lost someone who's so special to them. How can we believe in a God of love and care when such tragedies uh, come and affect us individually? And when we look at the world around us and we see uh, the state of 
the way that things are, not just COVID, but so many other tragedies going on and injustice going on. It makes you wonder about this so-called God of love. But when God created the world, the Bible tells us that it wasn't meant to be like this. It was a perfect place where men lived together in harmony with one another, with their creation, uh, and with God himself. But sadly, as so often happens when mankind comes along, we stick our dirty fingers in and make a complete mess of things. And God has been trying to sort out that mess that we made from that time forward. The whole of the Bible is uh, an account of God's work to bring his creation back to where it should have been, to that perfect place where we can rest in peace with him and with one another and with the whole of our creation together. I'm going to read just a short passage from the Bible. It's from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. It's a, a vision, if you like, that God gave to uh, St. John of how things are going to be when he brings his creation back to where it always should be. St. John writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as I said at the beginning, we're here today not just to say goodbye to Dave, but also to celebrate his life and to give thanks to God for him. He was born, I was told, in John Street here in Liv, Leek and lived here for the whole of his life. As a boy from the age of 10 to 15, he sang in the choir here, leading worship Sunday by Sunday. After school, he was an apprentice engineer at TNA Wardle until he was 18, and then he joined the army and went into the military police for two years. On leaving the army, he went back to TNA Wardle before moving on to become die house manager at Joshua Wardle until they closed in 2002, then moving on to work for Pirelli Tyres until 2018. At this point, he changed tack and went to work at a JCB Academy as a site, man site maintenance technician, a job that he loved, I was told. He really enjoyed being around the children, working all through the lockdown to keep the school running for those who were there. Dave was an enthusiastic member of League Bowls Club, at one time serving as club captain. But without a doubt, as we have heard from James, Dave's main priority and greatest love was his family. Sadly, his first marriage broke down, but he met Julie in 2004 and something clicked. They married in 2010 and the two families, Dave's children Emily and Kate and Julie's children James and Hannah, um, formed one big extended family, which Dave embraced and loved wholeheartedly. And when grandchildren came along, he worshipped them too. We've heard how Dave was a brilliant handyman and always ready to help out, to share his skills with those in need. He was, I was told, one of the kindest men. James and Julie spoke of, a love, of lovely holidays, especially their first family holiday together in Turkey. They, they absolutely loved it and once again made friends there that they're still in touch with today. Dave loved walking, as we've heard, especially with Henry, his constant companion. But now he's gone. This loving, generous man, taken from those he loved. He was always very careful about COVID-19 and always telling everyone around him to be careful too. 
So it's so sad that this awful disease was to be the thing that cut short his life. When he first got it, he seemed okay, but it wasn't long, just days before he deteriorated and had to go into hospital. Sadly, that deterioration continued, and it was only 10 days later after going into hospital that he died. So it's no wonder that you're sad today. Why wouldn't you be when such a large part of your lives has been taken from you? But as we have all heard, you who knew him have wonderful memories to treasure, much to celebrate, much to be thankful for as you say goodbye to him today. So now we bow our heads again in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to rise again. His cross declares your love to be without limit. His resurrection declares that death is overthrown. By his victory, those who believe in you are assured that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I'd like to leave just a time of quiet now and invite you in the silence to think back to the times you spent with Dave to say your own personal thank yous to God for him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Dave's life among us and for the privilege of knowing him. We thank you for the memories that will be held dear, for the love he showed to so many people, revealing something of your love for all mankind. Father of all, by whose mercy and grace your saints remain in everlasting light and peace, we remember with thanksgiving those whom we love but see no longer, and we pray that in them your perfect will may be fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Father, we hold before you today those who were closest to Dave and will feel his loss most keenly. We especially ask your comfort for Julie, for Emily, Kate and Greg, for James and Samantha, Hannah and Stuart, Megan and Freddie, for Bernice and Tom, Mark and Sue, Amy and Lauren, for Sharon and Rob, for all, Lord, whose hearts are heavy as they mourn the loss of a dear friend today. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life until the shades lengthen and the evening comes. And the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me, if you wish, in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're going to listen now to the second hymn chosen for today, Jerusalem.
Would you please stand? So let us commend Dave to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your mighty power you gave us life, and in your love you have offered us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust Dave to your merciful keeping, in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit in glory for ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen.